Hello there, my name is Matt York and I am the Llama Farmer. This is one of my Christmas cards this year. The dog on the front is called Dylan. Um, what's unusual about this card is the sender. I don't know if you can see that. That's signed Boris Johnson and Carrie Simmons, who, um, for those who are unaware, is the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. This Christmas card was unexpected. As some of you may know, last year every serious journalist in the known universe wanted to feature our llamas who had been delivering food to some of our neighbours. I've discussed it in some detail in a previous video, so I'll leave a link down in the description. If you're interested, I want to buff up on all the gory details. Anyway, the story got sensationalised into the stratosphere and when all around the world seem to be bringing a lot of joy and happiness to people at a uh, particularly depressing time for a majority of society. It was a pretty unexpected side effect of the entire thing, um, but not an unwelcome one. It was, it was really nice just to see how, uh, how much the situation cheered people up. It ended up getting noted by the UK government who called me up out of the blue last July uh, to let me know that I'd, uh, I, I'd been given a point of light award, which is basically um, a scheme they have to, um, to to highlight people who are making a positive difference in society. I think probably the majority of people um, actually do some kind of positive contribution to society, so it was a bit uncomfortable being singled out, uh, especially at the moment with um, with all the coronavirus shenanigans and lockdowns um, I think pretty much any any nurse in the world or the country is uh, is worthy of more praise than, uh, than what I was doing um, but there you go um, I guess it's a bit more unusual and um, like I said it did seem to bring a lot of happiness and joy to people so that's just the way it went down Recently I was contacted again by the Prime Minister's office. I was told he wanted to hold a call with the Lamas and some of the other Welsh award winners. That call took place last week. Originally I would planned to do it from inside the Lama barn with the Lamas all around me. But unfortunately, due to a technical issue with the call host, um, that wasn't possible. We weren't able to connect. So uh, it was a bit unfortunate as some of these guys had a thing or two they wanted to take up with the Prime Minister. 
Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't to be. So I ended up having to do the, the call from inside the house, which was less than ideal. And it was all a bit ad hoc and last minute. Um, but eventually we did manage to, to connect. Anyway, I thought you might like to see the call and hear what we talked about. So here it is, minus llamas for your view and pleasure. Screen here. Um, you can call me Matty if you want, if that keeps you happy. Matt or Matty. Okay, Matty. Um, My mum calls me Matty. But... Okay. Um, Matty, you've been delivering, uh, you, you, you've been going around uh, Clandesilio, if I've got that right. Clandesilio. Clandesilio, yeah. Clandesilio. Not bad. Uh, with a, a Clandesilio uh, with a, a llama. Uh, now, how, I, I, how is that? I mean, I can imagine that cheers people up, does it, having a llama? <laughs> Yeah, well, um, it's uh, it kind of it's, it's been a bit blown out of proportion by the media, to be honest. Um, <laughs> all, all, all we were doing was um, looking after our neighbours in the valley we live in. Um, it's something we'd have done llama or never llama, really, with the youngest people in the valley. We've got a lot of um, people that were in vulnerable categories here, and we just started offering them. Um, uh, you know, when we were going out to the shops, we just said, "Well, do you want to? Is there anything you want?" And we take a list. And, um, and just because our business is in lockdown, our, we run a llama trekking business. Um, it was good for the llamas to get them out of there. Um, the, the hard surface of the road keeps their nails down, so you don't have to trim their nails. It's good stimulation for them. Um, they can carry 25% of their body weight, so it was just a, you know, it just fit. The roads around here are terrible. Um, some of the private roads, you don't want to, our car, the suspension on our car would never survive it, so we thought, well, let's just put the food on the llamas and, and take it around to the neighbors. And so, you know, anyone in the valley basically that wanted um, or so, so you're using the llamas as sort of a, uh, to, to carry the stuff on, are you? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, it's just, you know, this is how it's been done for thousands of years. Um, you and walk next to the llama? Yeah, so they, um, they're all halter trained, so like you look at the horse, you know, you put a halter on it and, um, and a lead, you don't, you don't ride a llama, you walk next to it. Um, yeah, right. Did, did llamas yeah. spit? Did, did... <laughs> well, um, not really. Uh, well, they do, they can. Um, um, you should check out my, my YouTube channel, The Llama Farmer. I did a video on it. But yeah, um, yeah. llamas spit, alpacas spit, dogs bite, cats scratch. It's just, yeah. Yeah, animals do it. But yeah. not, yeah, unless you're doing something to annoy it, then uh, it's, it's unlikely. You've got a well trained llama. It's a bit of an urban myth. Um, it's something yeah. maybe back in the 80s when people didn't know so much about them when they were first, you know, not so many in this country in, in zoos and they weren't raised properly and kept with other llamas, then that's when you get behavioural issues. But um, if, you, if you're raising them properly and doing a, a good job, then yeah. absolutely. No, the only reason I say that is because I, I, I remember I, I used to read those Tintin books, and, they, and I think it's in Seven Crystal Ball, in my memory. I think that they yeah. have a llama that spits on them. That's the interesting, actually. That's, that's the first, that's the first time. Angry, so he spit. Um, yes. That's, what that's when llamas actually came into my consciousness, was um, was in Tintin. I remember watching that yeah. thing. I think he said something like several men with llamas, and I thought it was a ridiculous thing, and my, my llama journey sort of escalated from there. I'm, I'm glad you had the same experience. Yeah, I, I, I remember <laughs> that one. But in, in, in Wales, you would have thought it was a llama was pronounced <laughs> Well, yeah, initially, you know, there was, um, I guess people got used to them around here pretty quick. It's, you know, yeah. it's, you know, we take them out in the public um, pretty much every day in the summer um, with tourists and um, people get used to them. Um, so um, it, it wasn't really anything special, but then I think the BBC picked up on it and it just, it just went all around the world and went crazy. But again, I mean, again, it's, it's just one of those things where I think probably these difficult times will cheer people up. Yeah, I think that was kind of the, the almost the secondary impact of it really, there was the initial, you know, doing the good thing for the neighbours, but then just the amount of joy it gave people around the world. Was I think it would, I'm fantastic. Thank yeah. you very much. And um, I've actually got a llama called Dylan as well. So, um, it was Dylan. interesting. Now, is, it, is it spelled D I L Y N? Or is it? No, I'm afraid not. The, the Welsh way, the proper way. That, okay, that's D Y L A N. Is it yeah. after Bob or, or Dylan Thomas? <laughs> well, kind of both of them, I think. Yeah, yeah. So I saw you had one called Hendrix, so I thought I did, yes. have, yeah. there was a theme developing. 
we, oh, yeah. we started off with Welsh names and um, realised most of our um, customers come from England and couldn't pronounce them. So this year we went with a musical theme. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you very much and uh, all the best to, to Dylan the Llama. Um, no reason. Thanks, thanks for Christmas, Dad. Thank you. Uh, so there you go. I wasn't expecting to have a shared appreciation of Tintin and the llamas within Tintin. So that was pleasant. Hopefully in the future we might be able to do a follow-up call with the llamas involved this time. Or alternatively, perhaps we could do a ministerial llama trek. I think Michael Gove would enjoy that. You reckon? Yeah. <laughs>